Hey, welcome back to another video. This is officially part two of the open box mono price maker ultimate. And this is what we've printed with it. So we got our second printer in the mail and in this video, I'm gonna go through a bunch of upgrades that I had to do. And this is the final product that we printed. Uh, and of course we, we sanded and painted, but our prints did not look like this at the beginning. It took quite a few upgrades and settings. And so I'll take you through my journey of figuring out this printer. So looking at the printer side by side, this one on the left is the first one they sent me and the one on the right is the second one they sent me. And looking at the differences here, I can see this is a solid piece, but over here it's perforated. It's almost like, well, and there's some scrapes right here. It's almost like this is a different design. Look at this. Um, it's like they they improved the design with some additional ventilation maybe for the circuit board underneath. Um, everything else looks pretty much the same. Next thing I noticed between these two is the print head moves freely. I'm barely moving anything. This one, like, I can't even move it. So there's definitely a problem there all right next thing I noticed was that these belts have these little tensioners in them it's like this is like some type of automatic tensioner the other one doesn't have that so there's there's actually a belt tensioner on on the, all four belts all right let's look at the items that were included here so in the new one I actually get a power cord but I don't get a filament holder. I get the Allen wrenches, but I don't get all these other things. Like this is a bunch of, these are that. I found out these are actually the feet for it. This came with another little USB, plus a pair of pliers and an extruder tool. This has none of that. Between the two, I should be able to have a, a complete kit. Okay, I went ahead and took the bottom panels off of both printers just to see what's different. And so that printer was an R320 and this is an R350, which I guess is a better power supply or something. I don't know, more powerful maybe. Also, I noticed the noise, the extra noise is coming from this fan right here. They put a they put an additional fan in here. I'm assuming just to to cool the motherboard, which is interesting. Um, and then you've got these vent holes here that don't even exist on the other ones. Definitely seems like an, a, a newer model of the same thing. I went ahead and checked all the screws and everything around and there was not anything loose. So I think we're ready to power it on. And let's just take a look at how old this printer is. One time stats. On for 23 hours, printed for 10 hours. That's pretty, that's pretty good. It's only... It's only a little bit more used than the other one. I definitely am going to have to replace this fan here. It's noisy. And probably that other one that I showed you that was inside, it's noisy also. All right, I went in and picked up some Amazon. So 1.75 millimeter. Interesting. Let's give this stuff a shot. Now the question is, which way does it go? All right, let's see if this thing will work. It's heating up the extruder right now. It is printing. It seems to be working well so far. It's been a couple days and I uh, thought I'd give you an update on my experience so far. Um, I printed this the very first thing I just you know came with a memory stick and I just hit go and saw and then this is what I decided to print came out okay um, you can see the bottom layer this is all just an adjustment I didn't I didn't do the leveling properly um, so that's why it's kind of coming up on the corner there and then down here is a IOT connected switch so I can remotely power on and off the printer and then I also did a makeshift um, Raspberry Pi with this app called OctoPrint. And I've got here a little camera. This is just a little $9 camera I got off of eBay. Um, 
and hooked up to octoprint so I, I'll make some type of mount here but but the purpose is really to use this octoprint because I can then control the printer all from the computer um, which which is uh, an amazing uh, thing to be able to do so like I can turn on set the temperatures um, I can see like a live stream which is very it's real time I can control all the settings on the printer uh, turn the fans on and off and um, and then I've also got time-lapse videos um, with this it also has an app called get anywhere.io and, and basically it allows you to connect to your uh, 3d printer over the internet uh, using OAuth which is a secure authentication and uh, then you can control and view your printer remotely so if I was ever to view that and I was doing a long print and something was wrong then I could then just remotely power off uh, with my app from uh, somewhere else okay I just leveled it again and I can see where I'm getting a good first layer now that's really critical to the whole thing you've got to have this first layer really perfect and I can see where uh, it's it's laying down flat now so it's good okay this part is finished this turned out pretty good I think this is nice and there it is installed this is the old one the one that comes originally and this one is really nice okay I've been running this for just about a week now and I've had some good success printing things I showed you this this new air flow thing I uh, put in a new extruder gear and I'm printing some parts here for something to assemble um, but last night I was printing and I came down to find a problem here and I looked back and the spool fell because this came loose and turned and then the spool went right off because this is a tiny little piece that holds it on it's a total design flaw I'm gonna have to print a longer thing that, that comes out further and holds it up this is just this is terrible here so because of that happened now it didn't quite finish it was right at the end here of this print so that's a bummer but I'll know for next time I got these dampers here that we're gonna install and that should take care of that noise. So I didn't do the Z-axis dampener. Um, it's probably not necessary, but it, I mean, it, I might do it someday. Really, the, the X and Y was the best upgrade. I mean, you can barely even hear it moving. All right, I had previously printed this fan shroud um, for this printer and actually what I learned was that it created so much back pressure that the airflow was actually flowing upward instead of out through these holes. It was actually going the opposite direction because there was not enough space in here for the air to actually flow. So this ended up not turning out. Then I did some checking online, some folks online, they recommended just this plain thing. Um, and I started printing one and man it was bad I mean look at when something like this happens usually it means cooling and of course I couldn't print a good one until I got at least a halfway decent one um, which I, I got this one um, so it actually was able I was able to get something at least printed so then I could put it on there and then I tried uh, printing again and I noticed that one side of it was um, good and the other side was still kind of rough. After doing some checking, I actually started reading about these uh, settings around uh, jerking, accelerating, and uh, extrusion temperatures and things like that. And um, finally found the, the best setting. It took me a while, which is why I've printed several of these, until I finally printed one that actually turned out to be perfect. I mean, this this is a perfectly straight edge. Um, so I'm really happy with that. And this is just held on by one screw. 
and it's tilted about 30 degrees to point directly at the nozzle. And I run the fan at 100%. Um, and these are the upgraded fans, which I really, really like. Also, I'm printing on a glass bed now. I don't use any type of uh, glue or hairspray or anything. I just print directly on the glass bed. One thing I do, I'll use some alcohol to clean off the surface. Um, other than that, I don't do anything and it sticks just fine. So I'm gonna start another uh, print and see how it goes. So overall, I would say this is a really good printer. I really like it. It's a workhorse, it's very ruggedized, but it did take a lot of tweaking and it did take a lot of upgrades, probably about maybe $50 total in upgrade between all the the various, the gears and the, and the glass bed and fans and all that stuff. Actually, the fans uh, were pretty expensive. The biggest thing that had the biggest impact was the cooling, just getting the right cooling duct. This is a good example of um, what it can do. I think we're super happy with this. It even pops out and a, even a bullet, you know, you pr 3D printed a bullet um, and then it goes back in and you know, this thing rotates in here. It's pretty cool. I'm super happy with this printer. Open box is a little bit of a risk because you don't know, you know, how old it's going to be or what's going to be loose. This one retails still for 700. I got it for like 319. So I'd probably say it was, it was worth it. And even when you get it, even if you buy a brand new one, it's it still needs all the upgrades just to get it to be awesome. But I would say it still does a decent job out of the box. If anybody's interested in learning more about the specifics of the settings or any of the specific things, uh, leave a comment. I'm happy to make more videos about uh, my 3D printing. So Austin has a list of things that he wants to print. So let's get started. Thanks for watching.